Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. Hope that you're all doing really, really well. Today's episode of Vlogmas is going to be a little bit of like a Christmas gift guide slash helping you find the perfect books to buy your loved ones this Christmas. I love doing these kind of like recommendation, personalised recommendation videos and tis the season to be buying books for everyone. And yeah, I got loads of requests on Instagram and I've had a little think, come up with some books, most of which I've read a few of which I haven't, but that I think are like the perfect gift to give. Um, I actually filmed a podcast recently for work where we were talking about like books that would make good Christmas presents. And so I got some good recommendations there from a very trusted source. And yeah, hopefully I can help you out as we spread all of the pages. That sounded weird. As we force our friends and family to read books with us for Christmas. So let's get straight into it. So someone says a book for my secret Santa who only likes popular crime, e.g. Paula Hawkins. For this, I'm going to recommend Magpie by Elizabeth Day. This is a kind of crime thrillery book that came out this year. And so for secret Santa, like hopefully she won't have already bought it or read it. And it's a funny one because I've only read Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I haven't read any of her other two. And I didn't massively like that book. And also Magpie wasn't my favourite, but I did like Magpie more than I liked Girl on the Train. And I see quite a lot of parallels. They're both um, real, like, accessible books. They're both very, like, domestic. So in Magpie, we're following a woman, a female protagonist, as with Girl on the Train, who moves in with her new boyfriend and they're, like, going to plan to have a baby. She's really excited about this new life. But then they fall on hard times. They have to take in a lodger. And then suddenly... The lodger's being a bit over familiar with the two of them, especially with the husband and our main characters, like, what is going on? And so, like I say, it wasn't like a perfect thriller for me, but the first half of the book I absolutely loved. And I know a lot of people also loved the second half. It's really compelling and quite like fast paced, but you've got a small cast of characters. People are being weird. You're not sure who to trust. You're not sure what's going to happen. I also really thought Magpie was good because there's a massive twist in the middle of the book rather than like at the end. And that really like shakes up how you see everything. And yeah, I think this is a pretty good recommendation. I think he or she would enjoy it. Someone says a really gripping thriller, ideally centered around a missing person. So for this one, I feel like I recommend this book all the time. So I'm going to give two. Um, the first one is The Last Place You Look. I can never remember what it's called by Kristen Lepionka. This is the first book in the Roxanne Weary series. This is a series that I read for the first time this year and I've continued to rave about all year. You see Roxanne Weary, who's a private investigator living in Ohio and she's contacted by someone who is the sister of a man who's in prison um, and he's in prison for killing his girlfriend's parents and his girlfriend was missing and never seen again. So it's kind of assumed that he also killed her but the guy says he doesn't do it the sister believes him and what happens to kind of spark off the book is that she sees the sister and she knows she's seen her um and so no one else really believes that she's well they believe that she's missing but everyone thinks she's dead and then roxanne has to investigate um this was such a gripping thriller it had a good amount i would say of like world building atmosphere like it is a very character focus book as well especially because it's a series you're really like setting up Roxanne and she's a brilliant character but I was gripped by it I read it all in one night um I loved the ending thought it was so satisfying when you find the answer you see all the clues that you missed along the way and there is then I don't think it's spoilers to say someone else goes missing another girl so it's definitely very missing girl focused but in a really really good way I couldn't put it down I loved it. If you've already heard me wax lyrical about Kristen Lepionka all year, then I would recommend Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. Again, not a thriller that was like, I absolutely loved it. Equally, it's one of the more gripping thrillers that I've read all year. I also read this in a day. Like I was on holiday, read it in like three hours, did not put it down from when I picked it up because I was like, I have to know what happens. So in this book, we're following three perspectives. Um, this young girl, this teenage girl, who you know is missing, but you get her kind of diary entries leading up to her going missing. You get a woman, a middle-aged woman, who is the wife of this girl's child psychiatrist. I and mean, then she's just sort of living her like suburban life in this house, in this like posh street where potentially that girl went missing. And then we follow another man, seemingly unrelated, who is kind of accused of kidnapping that girl, or they think he's the one who took her and so there's these three interlocking perspectives which make it so fast-paced i think in general lisa jewel just writes such compelling thrillers that you can't put down the ending for me in this one wasn't great i think some people absolutely love it because it is a kind of big twist at the end the twist didn't necessarily work for me but like it's a very subjective thing maybe you'll get the grippingness you'll get the missing person and then you'll love the ending so if you read it let me know someone said mystery books for seniors slash elderly people 
also totally understand if you don't know any. So I actually do have a good recommendation for this. It's a series of books um, and I haven't actually read any of them yet. I've had one on my shelf for ages but I was talking to my friend and colleague who I did the podcast with and she's discovered this series this year. She is an elderly but it is very much a kind of cosy mystery crime uh, and it's the Nicola Upson Josephine Tay mystery series. So Josephine Tay was a crime writer in the like golden age of crime 1930s and Nicola Upson has reimagined her as the detective so it's set kind of in the interwar period about Josephine Tay and she makes this friend in the first book who is a detective a police officer and they kind of solve these cozy fun mysteries my friend was saying like they're not like super high stakes like traumatic like violent mysteries they're a bit more Agatha Christie inspired but she said that also like the setting the characters are really just lovely interesting because it's kind of historical and it's really built up to be this like london set yeah golden age like cozy historical fiction um and i know that her mum also really likes them they are really really popular and yeah i think there's like 13 or something books in the series and there's also two christmas ones so that might be nice as well if it is for a christmas present someone said i always guess the end to thrillers i'd love a thriller where i'm surprised i think yeah this is always the thing isn't it i'm definitely very guilty of just constantly looking for that thriller that's gonna like completely blow my mind. And I do like to be surprised with my thrillers. I do like to not guess it. I do have a video all about my top 10 thrillers, which I'll link below in case you want more. The one I'm gonna stress is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. I read this book this year. It's one of my favorite thrillers that I've read this year. I really, really love it. And it's not necessarily a super fast paced, like breakneck twist. But I definitely didn't guess the ending until the final pages. And I think that Jane Harper really did such a good job of setting up a cast of characters where you're not sure about any of them you can't rule any of them out um, and it's just a really amazing thriller it's set in australia in queensland i think in a very very rural isolated area where our protagonist nathan lives i think he's called nathan on a farm um, and his brother owns the next farm along and then there's like the big family farm that another one of his brothers owned whereas where they grew up um but there's like a three hour drive between all of these farms so they are like real in the middle of nowhere and then this middle brother who's taken over the farm and who's the kind of like now patriarch of the family is found dead in mysterious circumstances he's died of exposure um he's been out in like the sun in the middle of nowhere and they're like why would he do that like is it suicide why would he just walk out into the middle of nowhere knowing he was gonna die this brother who died has a family their mother lives at the house their kind of uncle figure and yeah it's a really really tightly plotted tense family story the characterization is brilliant i think sometimes with the thriller yes you might not guess the ending but i don't know for me i don't just want like a totally cheap payoff where i'm like well i could have never have guessed that like great it was the raccoon who turned into a murderer i don't do you know what i mean i think i like that i was surprised and i was like oh that makes sense like that all came together but i hadn't guessed that person and yeah it's just a brilliant super atmospheric very interesting character study loved it thriller someone said it christmas eve read um i think for this i have to recommend hercule poirot's christmas by agatha christie i read this last christmas and it reignited completely my love for agatha christie and for poirot it's yeah a classic christie cozy locked room murder set at christmas with this awful family and poirot comes in to investigate but i think that you can really read agatha christie books quickly it's just the perfect like cozy but fun compelling thing to sit on christmas eve with like a little glass of wine a little mince pie and read it and also it's one of my favorite endings of an agatha christie book uh, i love it it's got such a ridiculous but satisfying twist and yeah i think that would be a really fun christmas eve read so someone says books for someone who has too many books and can't decide which to buy next so i thought about how to approach this and i thought okay if i had to recommend one new release this year that you would buy like it's overwhelming you want to buy yourself a book or someone's asked if they can buy you a book for christmas and i get it there's so many books especially like when you watch booktube there's just books 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 which is great how would i narrow it down and i thought about it and that is infinite country by patricia engel i adored this book it's so beautiful it's um, a kind of family story about a colombian family who are split across colombia and america we follow initially talia who is a 14 year old daughter who at the beginning of the book is in a correctional facility because she's done something bad um, but she needs to get out of there because she has a plane ticket to go to america and be reunited with her mother and her siblings she's currently been living with her father in colombia and as it goes on as you kind of follow talia like racing to the airport it really slows down you go into the history of the family how are they together why are they separated um it's a story about family and love and 
immigration problems in America and it's a story with a lot of like Andean myth into it and such setting in Colombia and I cried my eyes out it was so heartwarming and heartbreaking and beautifully written and yeah if I had to pick a new release of this year to read I think I'd have to say that one someone says for gra for a grandma who likes thrillers and soap operas so for this I'm gonna recommend three hours by Rosamund Lupton because I think this is a really good blend of a thriller um, like a really fast pace on the edge of your seat book and has those kind of soap opera elements so this is about a English school that's like kind of isolated in the middle of nowhere but it's this really like progressive school where they do a lot of like arts and crafts and theatre and the kids can kind of have a voice in their own education um, but at the start of the novel basically there's a school shooting and they have to lock down the building for three hours with like an active gunman in the school and they're all in different parts of the school some of the kids kind of get out immediately some of the teachers are locked in classrooms with students and it's so like edge of your seat again read this all in one sitting like couldn't put it down because the thriller like thriller you know well obviously it would be pretty thrilling in a bad way if there was someone with a gun like the stakes are so high and Rosamund Lupton does an amazing job at really building up that tension having these big moments of catastrophe and emergency but then she'll slow it down because there's all these different characters, as I say, students, teachers, parents of students, and you go between a lot of perspectives as they are experiencing what's happening. And that's why I think the soap opera element really comes into it because you get these distinct characters who all have distinct relationships to what's happening and you explore it all through them. And the character work is very good as well as it being like edge of your seat thrilling. Someone says, my dad only reads Murakami. I would like to find some other authors that he would like. And someone else says, a brother who has only read Murakami and nothing else. So I haven't actually read any Murakami, so maybe not in like the best position to recommend that. But what I do know of him, obviously he's a Japanese writer and it's very like surreal stuff is what I know. So I would say that one of my favourite authors, Kazuo Shiguru, is definitely his books can often have a, a surreal element to it a bit of weirdness um as well as being like a very literary writer in particular I'm thinking of When We Were Orphans which is a book I read this year of his and absolutely loved it's a kind of fake 1930s like detective novel that then goes spirals in a very different direction because we're following this guy who wants to be a detective and then he's a really famous detective but his parents went missing when he was a boy living in Shanghai and so he goes back to Shanghai to kind of try and solve it but things get very very strange it's in the lead up to world war ii so there's a lot of stuff going on like with japan china and yeah it gets weird in the best way um and as i say i haven't read murakami murakami so it is hard but i think maybe that and also ishiguro has some other more surreal books like the unconsoled i know is definitely one of his weirder ones also another kind of book recommendation that i've read i would recommend braised pork by Anne yu this is a book set in i think it's set in beijing and it's about a woman who's she finds her husband dead he seems to have drowned in the bath and then there's this strange drawing next to him of this like mythical fish creature and so she sets out on this journey to understand what this fish creature is and what happened to her husband and it's a bit of a character study of a woman who has lost like her husband but then again gets very surreal and weird and like mystical in quite a fun way that I think maybe a Murakami reader would enjoy. Someone said buying for someone who hates clutter obviously this i don't know if they maybe thought like not necessarily books um but this is a book recommendation video so you're getting a book recommendation i thought about this and i think if you don't like clutter and like loads of books maybe they're not a huge reader i think it's always really nice to buy like maybe someone's favorite book or a book you think they'd really like in a really really beautiful edition because then they can make it part of like their home deck or their interior design so like the penguin cloth bound classics are a classic they're a favorite i think they're stunning i've bought them for friends who aren't big readers for friends who are big readers and just on your coffee table having like a gorgeous penguin cloth bound i don't know i don't see that as clutter i mean clearly i don't see books as clutter full stop because my house is full of them but i think that's really special and um, virago also do some gorgeous like modern classics that again yeah i think if it's a beautiful object that they can admire that can fit in with their house and also they can read that's great someone says what book do i get for a friend who's going through a breakup I would say Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. I really, really enjoyed this book. It's about a woman in her early 30s who has been single for a long time um, but decides to get back into the dating game, starts on the dating apps, meets this guy. They have this like whirlwind romance and she's just like, I can't, like he's so amazing. And then he ghosts her. And I think that I can imagine if, if I was 
going through a breakup like i'd find just that quite helpful because you really see on the page this like beautiful romance that i think sometimes when you're going through a breakup when you're feeling a bit shit and alone it feels like everyone else has those perfect relationships and like what's wrong with me that i can't have that everyone else is so happy and i think the book really shows like the way that sometimes that happiness especially that like overt love bomby happiness isn't real um and then you see nina really like deal with it work through her emotions it's definitely not a book like a romance book where it's like and then they got back together like it's very much about processing being single it's also about a lot of other things in her life friendship and family like as she gets older and it's just a really good book it also does have some like funny moments in i think if you're a young woman living in england you might find it quite relatable in some ways um it's very much like of our time and yeah i really enjoyed that someone says for my illiterate boyfriend show him the magic of reading not a boring classic or a crazy sci-fi i had a similar thing with alex my boyfriend um he used to be a big reader and then really wasn't which is fine but that had to change so i thought about what the books were that i bought him when i was trying to get him into reading um and i bought him life of pi by yam martel uh, a few Christmases ago and he read it like over Christmas and really enjoyed it and it's a book that I read at quite a young age that I think introduced me to the magic of reading like adult books it's a really special book for me and it is a kind of modern classic it's about a young boy who lives in India his parents own a zoo and they're moving so they're on this boat with all their animals the boat sinks everyone dies uh, and this young boy is left on a small like rowboat with a tiger in the middle of the sea and it's kind of about how he deals with that what what the hell is he going to do i mean it is a really really magical book not like actually magical but like magic of reading magical because it's such an inventive idea the way it plays out is so it's like fascinating and you wouldn't think like spending most of the book on a boat with no other human characters would be interesting but it is i think it appeals to people who kind of like those almost like survivalist books there's definitely a lot of like intrigue around it and the ending blew my mind especially i think if you haven't read a lot it's not something you would necessarily be looking for i still think it would surprise me if i read it for the first time now but especially if it's one of the first books you read i think the ending is just like a magical experience in itself so yes i would recommend that someone said a mum who loves historical fiction i'm not a huge historical fiction reader um but i would recommend it's a kind of like more recent historical fiction the offing by benjamin myers it's just such a beautiful like intergenerational friendship story about a young boy just after the second world war who lives in county durham he's like 16 and he sets out on foot one summer to like walk around england and see the sights and explore the world and he gets to whitby and meets this older woman who's lived there for a very long time and they start this friendship and she kind of shows him teaches him about food and literature and yeah they have this beautiful friendship it is very like post second world war there's a lot of like talk about war and talk about what life was like then and it's just a gorgeous story i absolutely loved it someone says a person that loves to read but you can't buy them a book because they probably have it i think maybe someone else said like a book for book lovers i have a good recommendation for this and it is the literary almanac by francesca bowman so francesca bowman is a writer and she also owns persephone books and um, the bookshop used to be in london now it's in bath they're gorgeous persephone books are an amazing present in themselves they publish often like out of print female writers from the 20th century like kind of like forgotten female writers and the books are stunning they come in this like dove gray cover with these like beautiful end papers um but the literary almanac is francesca bowman's new kind of book about books and it takes you through the entire year and she gives recommendations of books for like each month and each season as well as talking about that book and recommending books that are like that book if you like them so there's a lot of like really well-known books in there that i think you'd enjoy reading about there's a lot of books that you that you might never have heard of and i think if someone has read a lot of books and you don't want to risk it you're kind of giving them the gift of a nice bookish like non-fiction nerdy present but then also they might find through that books that they've never heard of before and then you get that win that's a point for you someone said an aunt who likes real life not fiction kind of miserable stuff likes war books this is definitely not my wheelhouse i would say i tend to the non-fiction i read tends to be a lot more like personal memoir i don't particularly read a lot of like very distanced like more like big thinking historical event kind of books but one that i haven't actually read but i really really want to is say nothing by patrick radden keefe so this is a book about the troubles and it's kind of seen as like the modern like the book about the troubles in northern ireland and like i say i haven't read it yet but it's very much on my tbr but everyone i know who's read it has loved it and i think it's definitely very like non-fiction it is miserable in that the troubles were understatement of the century not a very jolly time you know it's not a war book but it's those kind of ideas so i think that maybe that could be good a book that i have read if maybe you're thinking she wouldn't mind something a little bit more personal we have always been here by samra habib is kind of her memoir about growing up in Pakistan, moving to Canada as a refugee, and then 
about her life um what it's like being a muslim in north america and it is definitely very personal she also talks about like her sexuality discovering that it has that elements of like not war but like big social issues it's not a miserable like it's kind of uplifting at the end but it definitely covers some darker topics um, and it was really interesting especially i guess the parts at the start when she's living in pakistan might appeal to your aunt someone says something short and disturbing for my boyfriend who's finding it hard to focus on fiction at the minute definitely tender is the flesh by augustina Bastarica. i read this book last year like between christmas and new year and i read it on my phone which i don't act like love doing on script but as soon as i picked it up i was like okay i'm gonna need to finish this now and it's super super disturbing super super short and just great so translated fiction piece about a man it's like a dystopian future in which you can no longer eat animal meat because of this like virus and so they've started farming humans for meat and we follow a guy who just works in one of the like human abattoirs and he's kind of a normal guy because that is the norm now and so there's a real like understatedness to this to the dystopia and it's not this like huge big world building thing you get like small bits about what the hell is going on in this world that are really like intriguing as you go along but we're following him and kind of his morality and this book goes to weird disturbing places it's got some great like twists in that you don't see coming and like i say like once you pick it up you won't put it down and i absolutely loved it someone says my gran something nice slash easygoing and intergenerational so the offing again 100 percent would work for that that's very easygoing and heartwarming and intergenerational friendship also a book i haven't read but that i know people who've absolutely loved it this year is still life by sarah winman this is a historical fiction novel set in the like post-war period in italy and we follow an intergenerational friendship because it's like an older woman who's there to i think like she's like an archivist or like a conservist or something and then a younger male soldier and they strike up this friendship and you follow them over a long period of time and you see like italians england's and all these places and it's very historical and everyone says it's like utterly utterly charming and has that intergenerational friendship so that might be a good one someone said something for my dad who likes birds nature and walking are you describing my father um a book that i think would be really good for this is it's called a sweet wild note uh, by richard smith and it's a non-fiction book about bird song so it's quite specific but i think especially if your dad's someone who likes birds my dad loves birds they find it really really interesting and um, it kind of explores like the history of bird song or the ways it's influenced literature music science and obviously it is very nature focused because it's about bird song it's a weird little book uh, it's not one i get to recommend often but i think it might be a good fit for your dad and then someone else a dad who likes science the dads are really coming through with the dad recommendations which i appreciate i don't read a huge amount of science books to be honest but i would say Say that I know my dad really enjoyed The Body by Bill Bryson. I'm a huge Bill Bryson fan. I haven't read this one, but I love his other books. He's a brilliant writer, and The Body is kind of like a popular science book that looks at the body. He kind of takes the reader on like a head to toe journey through the human body and all the kind of weird and wonderful facts about it. He just has a really compelling way of writing. Maybe I guess if your dad's like super, super into science, it might be a bit like light touch and introductory, but then also you might find it interesting to read it from like a different lens, like not an academic one, one that's a bit more like just interesting, weird facts. Someone says a book for my wholesome auntie, no violence or trauma, please. Early Morning Riser by Catherine Heine. Recommended this book so, so much this year. I loved it. It was so wholesome, so gorgeous. I know people of literal all generations and ages who've loved it. Um, it's set in a small town in Michigan and we follow Jane, who's a primary school teacher over kind of 18 years that she lives in this town from when she moves there. And it's a very like Gilmore Girls, Stars Hollow-esque town. There's a lot of like very funny characters. Everyone's very much in each other's business. It's a bit of a romance, it's a family story, and yeah, I just, whenever I think about this book, feel like such warm feelings, and also it really, really made me laugh. My mum's loved it, my aunties have loved it, my boss loves it, my boss's mum loves it. I think it's a, it's a safe bet. Someone says, for my sister who only reads terrible self-help, I need something good disguised as it. So I was thinking of this one, because again, I absolutely don't read self-help, but I was talking, when I was doing my podcast, we started talking about um, Anne Patchett and her essay collection, This is the Story of a Happy Marriage, I think it's called. So I love Anne Patchett's novels, although I haven't read this book. And this book is kind of like a memoir mixed with like stories, like teaching stories. Um, it says from a childhood to the present day, from a disastrous early marriage to a later happy one. It covers a multitude of topics, including relationships and charts the hard work and joy of writing. And I think she kind of like works through her life and talks about what it was like and how she got there. And I think there's a quote about it. that's like, this is self-help for people who don't like self-help. 
and I think that would work the other way around whereas if you're used to reading like more like typical self-help books uh, I think this is a nice like segue maybe into like more memoir or maybe she would read this and if hopefully she enjoys it get into Anne Patchett's fiction um, because I think it's it'll have those kind of familiar tropes about terrible marriage that didn't work out and this is how I dealt with it and I'm now in a good place this is what opening a bookstore was like and the stresses of it and now I'm in a good place. So yeah, I think that might work for your sis. Dad who doesn't read much. So my classic recommendation for anyone who like doesn't read much, start a book is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Shiguru. It's just the perfect book. It's compelling and like innovative and heartwarming, heartbreaking. It's about, it's a really hard book to describe. It's about this school. It's like boarding school that these teenagers go to the school's weird and they don't know why and I don't want to say anything more so that's my classic but I do recommend that a lot so a new one for that is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam I also read this book last December and it's so good it's kind of got like some thrillery vibes there which I think is good for people who don't read much not thrillery but like compelling but it's really like well written good character study it's about a family who go to New York I think it's like upstate New York to stay in a holiday home for a week and then weird stuff starts happening the power all cuts out and they're like okay it's just a storm but then they get a knock on the door and it's like oh we own this cottage and now we can't get back to where we we're meant to be staying so we need to stay with you and so these group of people is thrown together and things start getting really weird it's very very tense i'd say unput downable some people don't like the ending i liked it but yeah again i think it has some stuff that would be really exciting if you don't read a lot someone says husband likes genres i don't sci-fi and fantasy loved project hail mary and lord of the rings i'm so not good on fantasy and sci-fi like at all but all I can do is offer up like the closest thing that I have read to that or a book that I think has kind of crossover appeal so Piranesi by Susanna Clark I enjoyed this book and I mean it won the women's prize I'm sure everyone's heard of it it's kind of like a fantastical book about this character called Piranesi who exists in this strange lonely world and as the book goes on we kind of find out about it so I enjoyed it as a non-fantasy sci-fi reader but um my boss who I did the podcast with was saying her dad like only reads like sci-fi and fantasy like he loves Ian M. Banks and he said that he really enjoyed Piranesi because it felt like kind of similar to that in a way obviously very different but I think yeah maybe it could have some crossover appeal someone says a friend who loved Shuggy Bane and Hamnet last year so I haven't read Shuggy Bane but I've read Hamnet and they're like very Hamnet's very historical Shuggy Bane less so but I would say they're like quite epic stories and they're quite emotional stories. I cried my eyes out to Hamlet. I know people say Shuggy Bane's really sad. So for this, I think Betty by Tiffany McDaniel would be a great recommendation. This is another kind of like quite long epic-ish family story about family living in Ohio. The dad is Cherokee, the mother is white. They have four or five children, I think, that survive. Um, and Betty, we follow as like our main character, one of the children from like 1950 something. We follow her for like a good few decades. It's really, really emotional. Some really difficult things happen. It is very sad, but it has that richness of like character portrait, particularly of Betty, but of her father as well and some of her siblings. And it feels very like immersive in the time and the setting. And yeah, it explores some really interesting, but difficult things around like race and family and yeah I absolutely love this book I know a lot of people do I think that would be a good recommendation someone says a sister who just got into non-fiction gonna link my best non-fiction books down below but shout out to The Lost Family by Libby Copeland it's just such an underrated amazing non-fiction book it's all about how DNA testing is changing how we see family and it's full of like really interesting case studies that I think is good for if you're like getting into non-fiction it can feel like fiction because you're really being like told a story about real people but then also has some more like non-fiction bits talking about like how DNA testing came about thinking about like big questions about what it means for family and identity it was a brilliant book I cried I loved it someone says book for a stressed student with little free time let's pick a nice short book that I love this year in the end it was all about love by Musa Akwanga it's really really little I'll just show you it it's here it's really slight um, and it's a piece of auto fiction about this character this man he's living in berlin and he's thinking about love and relationships he's in his 40s he's bisexual but he's single thinking about family his father died um, in the ugandan war and that's something that's really been traumatic for him and now he's approaching the stage of life where his father died concerned about climate change concerned about the rise of the far right and racism but also there's a lot of like beauty in here and it's just written so so beautifully you could i think dip in and out of it you could just read it in a couple of hours i think it's a nice kind of escape if you're stressed about uni to just sit and read some like beautiful beautiful writing and then we've got dad who loves non-fiction so i am going to return to the patrick radden keith 
recommendations, recommending two books by an author I've never read from, but I just know how well loved he is. So his new one, which came out this year, Empire of Pain, is about the Sackler family and looking at this family and the, you know, incredibly wealthy, influential family and the role they played in bringing like Oxycontin and Vicodin, I think it is, those kind of drugs into America. And apparently it's amazing. It's won prizes. I think it's a very good like dad nonfiction book and because it came out this year. And I will be reading both Empire of Pain and Say Nothing probably next year, let's be realistic, but I'm still recommending them. Kieran from Katie Books. I hate most books. Help me out with a guaranteed bop. Yes, I know you do, Kieran. I know you do. Leave that one with me. That's all I'll say. My non-reader boyfriend who is interested in space. I'll level with you. I'm terrified of space. I don't even like to think about it. The concept of it to me does not exist. Um, and so this is one of the ones that I am not gonna be able to help you out with. And I feel really bad. There's a few that I got that I was just like, I can't, I stretch, I stretch, and yeah, I cannot reach. And so I'm gonna say them, and in the comments, if you can recommend any books, please do, because I feel bad that I couldn't offer these lovely people anything. So we have non-reader boyfriend interested in space. We have stepdad who likes businessy books. Businessy books are like my actual worst genre of books, and I've never read even one. And then mum who only reads Leslie Pierce, and I didn't know who Leslie Pierce was and has to Google, and then I've never read any, and I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do a good job. So if you can help these people out, Drop, drop those comments below. Okay, well, I've been filming for a very long time, but I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful if I responded to one of your requests or even not, still hope you enjoyed it. Let's chat in the comments. If you've read any of these books, what you're gonna be buying people for Christmas this year. Obviously, I would love if you subscribed. My Instagram, my story graph, we'll link down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.